But we have to start, I think, first and foremost with one Scotty Barnes. I have down here, believe it or not, Scotty Barnes has arrived. And now, Waz, I give you right of first refusal. Would you like Rob to take this first mm-hmm. and you come in later? Or would you like to have the floor on Scotty? No, Scotty Barnes has come out the gates smoking hot. There's there's no two ways about it. Um, he's obviously upped his level of usage and involvement within the Toronto offense. I think it says something about the direction they're trying to take the team from, you know, sort of embracing their championship past and the people who were the pillars of that championship, whether it be Kyle Lowry, whether it be um whether it be Pascal Siakam, whether it be, you know, whoever, uh, Scotty Barnes is now, it, it's him, right? And and they're they're letting him take control and have stewardship. And he's he's rewarding that that uh promotion essentially. And you know, his shooting has been red hot to start. Oh I, my god, know, yeah. Some some skeptics, I might be included in that group, might say <laughs> unsustainably hot, but it doesn't matter. He's clearly better than he was last season, right? Um, last season, he was so far from the next Kawhi Leonard than you know anybody would have expected going in, expected going into that. But he's better now, and again, particularly on offense. Yeah. Um. The the shot is falling. The aggressiveness is 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 has been ratcheted up, and I think his defense has caught up to the reputation too. That's the thing that that you know a lot of people don't realize. You look at his sort of makeup. He's this fiery guy. Obviously, super athletic, stout. Um, there's this like expectation that he comes out and he dominates on defense. That hasn't always been the case to start his career. And I think his play on defense is actually caught up in some ways. Right. And so, yeah, there's no denying he's been incredible to start the season. Yeah, I think especially because even though his usage is up, as you said, was like he's just more involved in the offense. He's not hijacking possessions like the ball is still swinging to him. Yeah. or he's getting out on the break and he's just like feasting with all those opportunities. All the fact that clearly Pascal Siakam has been like de-emphasized in the Toronto offense. And that's a whole separate conversation that's worth getting into on another day. But as far as the Scotty part of it, like they're not shoehorning him into some kind of like go-to role where he has to do everything. I love that he's still allowed to be like a flow player and he's shooting the lights out, as you said, which may or may not last. But I think the important thing is even if the percentages come down and wind up somewhere in the middle of where he is now and where he's been, the jump he's making in terms of poise and feel, and as you said, like defensive execution on a play-by-play basis, those things are real. Those things are huge. Those things are are substantial star-making jumps, even if he's not this level of three-point shooter all season long. Yeah, the thing that jumps out to me is just the confidence and energy that he's playing with. Because around this time last year, there was a real morose vibe to him. And I think if you talk to people around that team, they would agree that there was something just amiss there with him. He was a little bit more diminished in the offense. And I don't know if it's the success with his jump shot. I don't know if it's what Rob Rob is referring to, where it feels like he's been more empowered and Siakam has been de-emphasized. But he definitely seems to be playing with more verve than I can remember. He looks more like rookie year Scotty Barnes with like 10 extra pounds of muscle to go with it. And so like, yeah, he's taking a step back that uh, against the Spurs in order to tie the game, which was like the craziest big ball shot that I could think of. But he's also still doing the typical things we saw from him have success early on in his career where he's just like pounding people in the post and then just dunking over the top of them. And so yeah. it's really the best of Scotty before and the best of this newer version with a little more skill and shooting to him. Yeah, it's, it's rookie year Scotty Barnes if he was you know hitting 40 percent of his threes. And that's a yes. that's a, a totally different player from the version of Scotty we've seen who has basically to this point in his career been like a free throw line in score. Like even the longer mid range stuff hadn't really been going for him before this season. And so to see him hit those shots at a high level, to hit threes at a high level, to not only hit threes, but hit, as you said, Justin, game tying shots, huge moment shots, ISO step backs. Ray Allen, tuck your feet into the corner kinds of threes off the catch. That confidence level is off the charts. Like uh, I if he is playing like that with that kind of empowerment from the coaching staff and his teammates with that kind of confidence in the fact that he's going to hit and make those shots. 
I think it changes a lot about who he can be as a player, right? Like that is when we ultimately were kind of sketching out the future for Scotty Barnes and what a lot of people hoped he would be. He had to have this. He had to have this kind of freedom and leeway and green light and that he's getting it in a way that is not corrosive to team offense. That's really, really promising stuff. So a guy that, that comes to mind who gets a lot of love on our show is Aaron Gordon, right? Um, who everything that he does, he does at full speed and with an incredible amount of intensity and, you know, understanding the attention to detail on both offense and defense when it comes to time in his cuts and, you know, uh, setting incredible screens and crashing the boards and abusing mismatches like he does that stuff with so much verve but he damn sure doesn't shoot anywhere close to 40 percent from three right and so if scotty does all of those things and he's making the three that's a, basically a perennial all-star player you know if not again the kind of guy who you count on to facilitate all of your efficient offense through, right? Like, you know, if not that, it doesn't matter. Like, to be a version of Aaron Gordon that makes shots, too, is, hey, man, that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, Even somebody like me who's been a little bit snarky about Scotty Barnes and what he does, like, if he's going to do this, this is impressive. This is, like, a very valuable player in, in, in our league. Well, especially if that version of Aaron Gordon who makes shots is also like the most intuitive passer on your team, right? right? Like that that combination puts you in a lot of interesting positions offensively, makes you incredibly flex flexible, incredibly versatile in ways that behoove this offense that the Raptors are trying to run that's so ball movement oriented, sometimes to its detriment. Like they do a lot of spinning their wheels in some of these games in part because they just don't have the spacing to run the kinds of stuff they want to run just yet. But you can see the bones of something that could work here for Toronto, for Scotty, and ultimately for like their long term marriage as, as far as like what this this arrangement can be for the both of them and what he can mean to Raptors teams going forward. Yeah, it's a real like if Siakam was Model T, like Scotty Barnes is becoming whatever comes after the Model T. I don't actually know about cars. <laughs> Big car um, guy. Just he's barrier. like a 57 Impala or something. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's, let's go with that. Um, but I have to say, I am a little skeptical that the two versions could coexist. Rob, I'm sure you could help me with the Marvel simile here. It's like two different alternate timelines of the of a similar type of player that just can't Why exist is this my in the job? same space. <laughs> well, Why do I, I think have to stand for, for the MCU? I, no, I, I certainly did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like I, it's sad sometimes when you're watching Siakam like bust his butt on defense and then kind of saunter into the corner on offense and you're right the possessions seem to be initiated by the point guard like Schroeder and Flynn are getting things going but the ball ultimately usually finds its way back to Scotty and, and leaves Siakam kind of just standing there spacing and it's just like I, I don't know what the future holds from him. And, and and I think there is a little bit of a trading places thing happening here. I was looking this up. It's eerie how Scotty Barnes's stats this season look like Siakam's stats from last season. And Scotty's stats from last season look a lot like Siakam's for this season. I won't bore you with the details, but it's like it's eerily similar. I'll tweet them out and you guys can look at them because I'm such so big on social media so you can look at those. But um, there really does seem to be like there could be only one here. Mm. It's not an accident that we've been talking about the trade-offs of that offense for for years now, right? With, yeah. with not just the two of them, but where does OG fit into that that mix as well? Like Siakam and, and Scotty Barnes are more playmakers, so they overlap even more so. But just in terms of like, how do we get these guys on the floor? How do we put them all in positions to do what they do best? And the answer is at some level, you can't. Someone is going to have to take a backseat for possessions or another. And if Scotty Barnes is hitting threes at this level, then in theory, that would enable you to put the ball in Siakam's hands more, right? Like Scotty can be more of a spacer. The problem is part of the reason Scotty Barnes is hitting threes at this level is because you're trusting in him and giving him more yeah, responsibility. His is up. Yep. Those two things are linked in such a in such like a clear way that I, I think as much as like I love Pascal Siakam's game. I just think that with the direction the Raptors are going, he he cannot be long for this arrangement. How do you feel about this de-emphasizing coming in a contract year for Siakam? That's 
that sucks. That sting. That sucks. Well, especially after Masai was kind of bagging him for not like getting with the program. Apparently, getting with the program <laughs> just means sitting in the corner and like letting like your brilliant <laughs> skill set just be be going to waste. It's like it's sad. I love watching Pascal Siakam when he's optimized. It just doesn't seem like that's in the cards in Toronto anymore. 